But um, it's really hard to put it on, put that on him when he knows I have meat in my fault. Like, he's like attacking me the whole time. Oh, Oops. Oh no, it's him. He came out fast though. Something's yeah. Going on. Something's going on. And there's a splash. I wonder if there's another one stand off in there. Here he comes. He's out here. Ah, that sound though, that sound really sounded like something was happening. See how he's kind of hesitant? I wonder. I wonder if there's a one in there. They like fight. Them. There's, there's, there's a genie rat. rat. It's a brown rat. No, it's a, it's a little. It's a little musky. It's a it's juvenile. Really, it's that fine? Yeah, it's a juvenile musky. And there's Boone. Let's see if we can get it. Where did it go? Uh, it down track. under, and I don't know if he's going that way or. I lost track. Of it. The glares. He's, he disappeared here, from my Jeff, here. Put these on. Holy crap. I have tried this before and it's never worked. It just well. it depends on the light, you know? Those are just five bucks at Walmart, they're nothing special. Dude, I've tried this before and it's There's never been. worked this well. Ever. You should probably have it. I well yeah, but you, you got a better eyes for spotting them. You got them Ethan? The, there you go. Yeah, that's where it disappeared. Okay, so he's right there. Oh, I see him, yeah. So young juvenile muskrats often use this. Adults will too, but it's very, very common with juvenile muskrats. They will just find a little quiet place and hold their breath and wait it out. Now, adults, when they do this, typically it means they're desperate. They are out of, oh, here's another one. They're out of options. So here's another one swimming. Yep. So when they do that, it means they're pretty desperate for an adult. But the babies will do it like drop of a hat. Yeah. Hairy or smooth? Oh, oh he's got, got one. one. You got one. You got it? Yep. A different one, it's a third. Now let's watch this again to see exactly what happened. I myself didn't even notice till I was editing the video. The muskrat is swimming towards Boone under the surface. So he, the muskrat doesn't know that Boone's standing there. And Boone doesn't know the muskrat's approaching him until it bumps him. And as soon as that muskrat touches him, bam, he's got it. Oh, oh he's got, got one. You got one. You got it? Yep. A different one, it's a third. Try to come back. He's coming down right now by this white plastic. Oh crap. You see him, Ethan? Yeah. He just buried himself. Dude. There he is. He yeah, came out. Dude. No muskrat though. Oh, there's a third. There's a third. Okay, let's see if he'll bring me the one back. Yeah, I got this one still sitting here, so that is a third one. Good eye, Ethan. Yeah. 
This one's moving. We got one moving down right past you. Now the one's still hidden underneath. That one's moving. That might be the third, yeah. Dude. He's really cruising that way. I think he's still, he's either, he's either still going or he turned back. This one's still hiding underneath. Dude. Here he is, he came out. Just right, he went back in. We got a lot of disturbance down here, so I don't know if he's, oh. yeah, he just popped out again. Dude. He's gonna find another one. Yeah, he just wants to hunt. He doesn't want to eat. It's gonna go right over top of the other one. You can smell it. I can. You can smell it. Yeah, he's gonna smell it. He didn't move, did it? It's still sitting there. That's wild. Oh, I can hear it. He goes, he's right up there where those sticks are. They got all plugged. See, he can hear How's this thing holding its breath for that long? We're talking about this baby muskrat. Oh, oh yeah. It's been there for five minutes. Yeah, if they don't move, they can hold their breath for, I've, I've heard, up to 15 minutes. Oh, wow. I don't know where they get that number, though. That might be an unnatural number. You know what I mean? In the yeah. lab and in real life. Right. You know what I should do? I should do this one in a cage. Let's see, where did it go? Yeah, it's under that spot. I think it's under that. Whatever those are. Those sticks. Yeah, it's under that spot. Yeah, it's under that. In here, you think? Yeah. That's where it's been, at least. Mink man. Do you know where the others are? No. I was pretty disappointed with Boone for not bringing back that muskrat the way he's been trained to do. So I decided I'd catch him and take him home in consequence for his actions. Okay. However, soon after catching Boone, we saw yet another muskrat, this time a large adult, and decided we'd give him one more chance. I got eyes on him. Got him. It's right under that stump. Cool. Oh, wow. Oh, here's no. a juvenile. Here, here, here's the baby. Oh, dang, the baby one. Catch it. I should have got my net. Baby's going, the adult went in there. He's in there now? The adult is in there, the baby's going right there. Okay, let's catch this baby. You want me to watch this on film or okay, keep my eye on the adult? You, uh, I got the baby. Okay. You watch us catching the baby, I guess. All right. I'll go run across. You stay on this side. Don't, don't cross, don't cross. We'll make a lot of money. Just stay on this side or just wait. That way you're... And then if it goes on the other side. It's on land, so hopefully you can just grab it. Okay. Okay. Is he on the other side of the stuff? No, it's right, it's right here. In the sticks, oh, right under the stump on your side. I got the adult over here. Okay. He's just sitting. Oh, I see it, I see it. I should have grabbed my net. The adult's making a run. Okay. Keep an eye on the adult, and you, he's up here. Follow me. Oh, wow. We'll just swim this guy down. I think the adult went right about where you're at, Jeff. Oh, good. So he stopped. I can't. I'm not certain. Okay, you get ready to get him on the. Sh just go grab his tail. Oh darn. Okay, keep following him. Get him, Ethan. See him, Jeff? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
hurry up, there's some pulls over there. So get up ahead of him. We'll just keep him moving. If he doesn't get in a hole, we'll catch him eventually. So just try not to cloud the water. guys. Okay, let's see. I think the sunglasses are a serious cool factor, Joe. <laughs> Here, 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 here. I hope you can bolt. I hope it's not going to go down. Like I said, that's the last place I saw him. I don't know if there's a hole. Well, yeah, we're going to need something. There we go. Get a boon. <laughs> Make or muskrat, Jeff. Oh, he's coming back this way, Joe. He's coming towards me? No, oh, my scratch's over here. Where is this? Right here. Where's he at? Right here. Boom! Here, <laughs> Mama Duck, just go away. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Uh, clear. Woohoo! Another underwater chase. Hang on, son, I'm coming. Hang on, son, I'm coming. Hi, guys. Good boy. Oh, that's a good mean Hang on. Hang on to it. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good mink. That's a good mink. That's a good mink. That's a good boy. Good job, Mr. Boone. That's a good boy. There we go, now it's dead. That's the death kick. Mm -hmm. As soon as their brain dead, they do that rhythmatic kick, kick, kick. 
You when hear? it's not rhythmic, they're struggling. As mm. soon as it kicks in, kicks into that rhythm, it's just instinctual. They're instantly yeah. dead. Just nerves at that point. Ask a boy. Glare hurt you, or could you see it? It, it, it? it was glary, but I got it. But it was glary. Darn, because it was perfectly clear. Yeah. Dude, that was cool. That's two in a row. Underwater chase. I actually, he can see it better when he does that. From what I could tell, when he went under, he could see it better than when he's surface swimming. Yeah, he probably can't see through the glare either. Uh -uh. Oh yeah, when it's submerged, he can't see it all. Yeah. I think about it when you're swimming. You can't see anything right. until you go under, and then your clouded view based off of the water. Right. The water clarity. Oh, that was awesome! Two in a row, dude. This is so cool. This is this totally opens up like doors that have been shut my whole life. You can't, him having that skill set. Yeah, being able to catch him in the water like that. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. And it's not just being physically able, it's it's being mentally able. So before this, most mink were intimidated by a muskrat in the water like that. In any water deep enough they have to swim, they're intimidated. Boone just doesn't care. Like he's not even remotely nervous about it. He has, from what I could tell, the perfect amount of self-preservation. Just enough to keep him out of trouble. I haven't seen Boone injured once, like with a visible injury, but you know, he gets them every time. Doesn't matter how aggressive they are. He'll wait till they weaken and boom, takes advantage of it. Oh man, that was exciting. That was super exciting. So one thing that a few people have brought up that they're curious about, they're like, okay, so Boone's catching these muskrats and you're obviously helping him a lot, right? I'm guiding him to where the muskrat is with rocks and things like that. So people ask, well then how do mink catch muskrats in the wild? Well, they don't do it like this, obviously, right? You see how much work it takes for Boone, with our help, to catch him in the open water. Mink in the wild, it's a rare circumstance where a mink can, you know, basically catch one the way Boone has been doing it over and over and over again. And the reason is they don't have our help, right? They don't have someone bird's eye view saying, hey, the muskrat's over here. The muskrat usually just swims away and either escapes or the mink catches it further down the stream. So let's say we weren't here. Let's pretend that it, it was just Boone. That muskrat don't took off, would have swam up here. Boone can't track it because it's swimming submerged. The muskrat would have come up into another hole. Boone would have eventually worked his way down, found the hole, went in there. If he gets lucky, he catches it before it gets back out. But muskrats do their best to, to be lucky themselves. They set themselves up and their dens up in such a way that they always have an exit. So Boone enters the water, the muskrat senses his presence, Boone takes off out another entrance, Boone searches the den, oh, muskrat's gone, he comes out, works his way down the river, and that would continue throughout, you know, geez, that scared me. <laughs> that would continue for several, you know, hours probably, until eventually the muskrat was just exhausted and he didn't come out of the hole quick enough. And I've seen that, that's what I used to do with, with like Fang. He would wear the mus she would wear the muskrat out and it would just keep hiding and hiding and eventually it wouldn't make it out of the hole in time. So that's how a mink would do it in nature. Another thing is, is really the majority of muskrats who are caught and killed by mink in nature are not healthy adults in prime habitat. The overwhelming majority of muskrats caught by mink in nature are at a disadvantage already before the mink even showed up. They are sick, they're injured, maybe they're young, maybe they're old, or something's happened to their habitat to make it less than ideal. Maybe there's a, a, a flood. The flood waters rise, they can't go in their dens anymore because they're all flooded, so they have to sleep on the bank, cold and tired and, and you know, just huddled up in a little you know, bush or something. They're at a much bigger disadvantage than they are down in their dens. The mink looks upon them and catches them in a flood. Or let's say it's the opposite, it's a drought. The water levels are really low, when the muskrats come popping out of their hole, they have nowhere to hide. The water's too shallow, they can't just dive and get away from the mink, so the mink catches them. During the breeding season, a lot of muskrats get caught and killed by mink. Reason being, they're all fighting with each other. 
So they're tired, they're possibly injured, uh, they're being forced into uh, fringe habitat that's less than ideal by other muskrats, right? Through the interspecies conflict, they're being pushed into fringe habitat that they normally wouldn't want to live in. Things like that greatly increase the likelihood that the mink are going to prey on them. You know, mink in the wild, they don't have the, 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 the ability like Boone does to be able to follow these muskrats through ideal habitat and still catch them anyway. They either have to get lucky or something in the environment or in the individual muskrat's life has to change to give the mink the advantage under normal circumstances. So anyway, that's why we're able to catch a muskrat that probably would have escaped Boone had we not been here due to the fact that we can guide him. Um, it's chance, there's always a chance that the muskrat will slip up and get caught, but living in prime habitat, it probably would have lived for a while here. It could run into Boone every day and keep avoiding him until one day, you know, a mistake happens. Well, that was freaking cool. Another yeah. awesome, Two days awesome in a row. day. Jeez. Oh, I love this week. <laughs> so much fun. Alrighty, well, let's call it a day. So they wear to an edge on the outside. What happened? So it's sharp here on the edges as well as here. So if they bite you and you twist or they twist, it just slices you because of that edge. That inner edge is just as sharp as the tip. So it's like a knife, essentially. And, uh, and I can attest, anytime they bite you, it ends up slicing more often. Now I'm sure you guys are familiar with YouTube censorship. They've got some serious censorship issues going on in YouTube and their policies are constantly changing. So I created the Mink Man's Exclusive Club where I can share these exclusive videos as well as give you guys a more behind the scenes look at our lives and how we train our animals. In YouTube, you guys see one or two videos a week, whereas I'm typically posting anywhere from three to six videos a week on my Mink Man's exclusive club. Now this club is more than just videos. People can ask me questions directly. They could even send me private messages. I can also share interesting stories that maybe I didn't capture on video. I can share interesting statistics on my different mink or dogs and really just give you guys an inside look on what we do and on my animals' lives. I really appreciate you following me here on YouTube, but if you want to get a behind the scenes look and be able to watch these exclusive videos that YouTube censors out, you'll need to join us on Mink Man's exclusive club.